Today we are going to do something fun in After Effects. Yes, yes, we've gone over this already. I know After Effects is scary, but haven't we established some trust here so that when I say that it is fun and it is an After Effects, that it's actually fun? My dear friend, Daniel Batal, he messaged me and he was like, Lila, you should do this tutorial because there's a lot of people who want to learn how to do this. So today we're going to create something that is also known as the audio spectrum effect. And this is such a fun effect if you're, for example, making a music video or if you have, for example, a voice recording and you want to show the waveform of that voice recording. So are you ready? Let's pull up the sleeves. So the first thing we want to do after we open After Effects is create a new composition. Now you will see that it appears on the timeline. Now it is time to create our waveform. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a solid. So we go right down here, right click, click on new and solid, and then go for a black solid. And now you want to go up here to effect or what you can also do is go to the right where it says effects right here and type in audio spectrum. As you can see, there's also audio waveform, which is something else. For this video, we are going to use audio spectrum. Now we have the waveform on the screen, but it could be that your screen like me, it is transparent. So in order to change that, we click on this one right here where it says toggle transparency grid. And now the background is black, which is very useful when you're designing this. But then when we export it, we want it to be transparent again. We'll do that later. If we look at the effects panel, there are a lot of settings, a lot of settings, and it may overwhelm you at first, but the good news is we don't need to use them all. And the better news is that all of these settings are actually way easier. I mean, I understand that when you see this list, you're like, Oh my God, but it's actually way easier. Let's go and explore these settings and I'll just show you which ones are actually relevant and which ones you don't need to worry about. So the first thing that you do really need to worry about is the audio layer. There's a little drop down menu right here where you can select the layer that you want this spectrum to respond to. And in our case, we want it to respond to the song. So what we do is we click on layer two, which is, as you can see right here, this is layer two, this is the song. And here you can see the name of the song as well. Now, if we go through it, you can already see the beat. Now here you'll see a start and an end point and you will see the little stopwatches, which means that you can change the length of this line as you go, if you want to. So what this basically means is a start point is on the left where you want the line to start on the left. And then the end point is where you want the line to end on the right. I told you this was easy. And I'm personally, I'm going to leave it as it is. Now here you see path. You don't need to worry about that unless you want a very funky looking waveform. In that case, what you can do is you can go up here to your little toolbox and you can click on the pen tool right here. And then you can draw something and you can select that mask and then it will just follow whatever you just drew on the screen. So of course, when you have a song, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the entire song is shown on this line. You don't want like any high beats to be left out or low beats to be left out. So in other words, you want to make sure that the start frequency and the end frequency, which you will see on the, on the screen right here, are accurate. So what this means is if we have the end frequency to the entire max, then there's probably not going to be a lot of that frequency in the song. So most of the line on the right will be flat. So you want to make sure that you find a nice middle point. Now the next one is frequency bands, which is something that I really like because it's basically the amount of little lines you want to appear. So if we would lower this, you will see only a few dots on the screen. And if you increase it, you will see more dots appear. The maximum height is basically how long you want those lines to be. Um, you don't want to go too crazy where it just like jumps out of the screen. You cannot even see it because it's being cut off. So you want to make sure that it just, it, 
It also depends on the look that you're going for, I guess. So just play around with it a little bit. Assuming that this is what you want already, what we have to do right now is we have to just stylize it by changing the thickness of the lines. And I like them to be really thin. I think this looks great. And here you can change the softness, which I think speaks for itself. And then here you can change the inside color and the outside color. And now this is something that most of you will be very excited about because it looks like a lot more work, or at least in my opinion, when I see something like that, I'm like, oh, that must be a lot of work, but it's actually not. And what I'm talking about here is the rainbow effect. Now you don't need to do a literal rainbow, but if you want to create anything like that or like a gradient, what you have to do is just grab this little line right here in this circle and then just move it around until you like the look. And as you can see, the colors are changing. And then the more you move it, the more it becomes like a rainbow. And I think that just looks so good. And it's way easier than it looks. You don't have to do any specific things. And then the fun thing also is if you change the inside and outside colors again, you will see that the colors change accordingly. So it will change according to the rainbow. And then you have some other cool options like color symmetry, uh, because as you can see now, the colors are exactly similar on both sides. And if you don't want that, you just uncheck that box. And then right here with display options, if you click on this drop down menu and you click on analog lines, you'll see that it looks more like a heartbeat. So if you have a sound effect like a heartbeat, you can very easily recreate the heartbeat like this. And you could also do dots, but I'm just going to go for digital. And then side options is basically on what side of the line or of the horizon you want the lines to go up and down. If you want it to be only on the top part, then you select side A. And if you want it to be on the bottom part, you select side B or both which is the look right now, you'll select A and B. So this is the basic waveform or audio spectrum. Now, if you want to take it a step further, for example, if you're looking for copyright free music online for free, you've probably seen Trap Nation. I'm not sure about the name, but I'll, I'll put the name somewhere in here. And what they usually have is a circle with the spectrum bouncing off the sides. So if you want to do that by going to effects and presets and then type in polar, and drag this to the black solid one. And as you can see now, the polar coordinates effect is added to the list of effects, just as in Premiere Pro. So again, nothing scary, nothing complicated, but as you can see, nothing has happened yet because we need to change the type of conversion. We wanna change that from this one to this one. And then as you can see, still nothing has changed. So what we need to do then is we need to change the interpolation to 100. And as you can probably see, there is a hole in the circle. It's not a full circle, but we can very easily adjust this by going back to the audio spectrum effect and then change the start and the end point. Let's put our sleeves back to normal because we're done with the hard work. Now, all we have to do is just stylize it. After you're done stylizing it and you like the look and it looks great, what we have to do is we have to go to File, Export, and then add to Render Queue. Now the Render Queue will open and right here you can see our composition that we just worked on. Then we have to go to Output Module and we have to click on Lossless. And then right on our video output, we wanna change the channels to RGB plus alpha because this makes sure that your video is transparent. So once you've exported it, it is transparent, except for the waveform, of course, but the video is transparent. So you can use it as an overlay on top of your video in Premiere Pro. And then click OK and then click Render. Now, are you sure 
Are you sure that you're ready though? Because I'm going to go back and I'm going to stylize a little bit because if you just spend a few extra minutes on that, it's gonna look so much better. Now, if you're happy, of course, go export it, click that button. But while you're clicking on that button, also make sure to click on this button, the subscribe button and the notification bell in case you want to be notified. And so we can see each other in the next video. And yes, I'm fully aware that there is a hair in my mouth.